Hello, and welcome to One Take. I'm your host, Dale Kirshner. One Take is a 10-minute discussion in which one CEO provides his or her take on today's most pressing economic and business issues. It's also called One Take because this is a nonstop, continuous, recorded conversation between me and the CEO. No editing, so bear with us. One Take is sponsored by the Platinum Group, the upper Midwest's most experienced turnaround and financial crisis company. Uh, I want to thank them for sponsoring today's One Take. Today, I'm pleased to introduce you to Chuck Runyon, who's CEO and co-founder of Self Esteem Brands, a collection of franchises worldwide that specialize in health and wellness for millions of people worldwide. You best know them as Anytime Fitness, perhaps also Wax the City, The Bar Method, and Basecamp Fitness. Anytime Fitness was founded in 2002 and for several years ranked as the nation's fastest growing franchise. It has 4 million people worldwide now, that now uses its franchise locations in 40 different countries. And it was the first franchise company in history to be on all seven continents. Chuck, welcome to One Take. Thanks, Dale. Pleasure to be here. You know, with 780 employees here in the States, but all these franchises, you have 5,000 franchises, about 3,000 in the States, but the rest worldwide, how are you doing with COVID-19? Well, it's been a pretty incredible eight weeks. I mean, something that uh, none of us could have ever predicted. And, uh, but we've been busy. Uh, you know, we of course have to support our nearly 4 million members across the world. We, we have to support our franchise owners. As you know, this is a very difficult um, climate to, for a small business owner to navigate. So we have, you know, a couple thousand different franchise groups representing those clubs you mentioned. So it's our job to help them navigate what to do during the shutdown, you know, to support their communities. And now we're getting back into the, the re-entry as the businesses start to open. So we are working very, very hard to support our franchise owners and our members across the world. Chuck, what were some of the things that you did, especially early on, uh, when it comes to helping them just navigate the fact that first of all, they were shut down and then they had financial pressures to deal with? Yes. Well, first, our, our order of priority has always been worry about our members first, our members and clients across the portfolio. So how can we make sure to still provide them the content that they're needing, right, to be healthy, especially if you're in our studio brands, Anytime Fitness. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, the payment structure, right, to, to freeze the payments during the time when our studios or clubs are closed. So number one is take care of our consumer, our member. Number two is think about your employees. So if you're waxing the city, how do you help with your serologist? How do you help with your personal trainers if you're in the gym business? And with the PPP, right, the payroll protection plan, that offered uh, something else for, for an owner to think about because that, the goal of that was to keep people on the payroll. And so we had to help them navigate that. Next is, you know, what do you do with your lender? What do you do with your landlords? Those are two large operational costs for the business. And so we've been trying to just make sure that they can you know, work with their landlords for deferral or, or abatements, same with their lender worry about the employee guidance. And now you have to worry about all the cleaning guidelines, right? To reopen with PPE equipment or to take precautions to open safely and responsibly. So again, there, there have been dozens and dozens of issues. And now it's also a patchwork-like process that, that varies by state and varies by our country. And so we are here to just help guide them through that process. Chuck, you know, there are many businesses that are still grappling with challenges. I think some of them have been able to maybe buy 30 to 60 days with their landlords, for example. What, what have been some of the specific ideas and, and tips that you've given some of your franchisees when it comes to dealing with their uh, landlord situations? Well, I think it's number one, you know, just to be very honest, it, remind them you are, we're a locally owned business. Sometimes under a large franchise brand, people forget that we are a collection of small business owners. Let them know what measures you are taking to preserve the business and invest so that the business will be better on the other side. Let them know that you're still supporting your clients in a digital format. Let them know if you have uh, applied for the PPP. Let them know the marketing you're going to put in place once you open it. So the, the landlord wants to retain tenants, right? They have, so at the end of the day, they don't want to lose that business. So you know, write them a letter, show them what you're doing, give them data on the business, and then ask for a plan. You know, develop a plan. Be very proactive with, all right, let me pay you a percentage rent over a period of time as this business scales uh, back. Yep. And then uh, on the PPP side, uh, we've, we've all heard stories about how some folks have looked at that situation and, and said, well, that's great, but I don't have any employees. 
um, or I can't have any employees uh, to be able to spend this money on. How have you helped people with that? Well, most of our franchise owners do have some employees. I mean, some may only have a few, others may have more, because we have also multiple unit operators in our system that, that might have five clubs or 10 clubs. So, you know, I, I like the fact that in this round of relief, relief from the government, they are focusing on small businesses. I think that has been a good thing. The tough part is it's been a very complex with the, you know, the policies always changing. So it's just been difficult for a small business owner to navigate. And then, you know, there have been, I think banks have been prioritizing some of their larger or longer term clients. So a small business owner has kind of been deprioritized. Um, so I, it, it hasn't been easy. And if you look at the macro data on unemployment, I don't think it's really done its job to keep people employed for small medium businesses. So, you know, again, I know it's been helpful for small business, but I think in some respects, it's also been a little bit too complex, a little bit too late, and uh, maybe not as effective as they'd like it to be. You know, I mentioned- and, and uh, Remember, start... payroll is just one of the operational costs. Remember, they still have rent in their debt. So at the end of the day, they, they've got to make sure their business can, you know, thrive in the future. Otherwise, there won't be any jobs for a business to go back to, so. Mm -hmm. When I, I introduced you today, I mentioned that you're in all those different countries. Uh, yes. What country has done the best when it comes to responding to COVID-19 and how? Um, you know, I think New Zealand has gotten quite a bit of credit for uh, their immediate shutdown. Now, they're a much smaller uh, country. We're talking less than 5 million people. And uh, you know, Australia is right next to them. I think they've come up with some immediate relief to companies, you know, providing up to 80% of payroll coverage you know, immediately making it just far quicker and easier to access than like a PPP program. Um, so I think those two kind of come to mind. I think, uh, you know, we do of course have clubs in Japan. I think they're going through it right now. I think they're going to reopen a little bit faster. So um, I, I just think some of the countries abroad have been much quicker to provide immediate relief um, to the business owners. You know, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, you have a fascinating situation because you have 780 employees, but then you also have all these franchisee relationships. How has your management style changed, if at all? And what have you learned from your uh, leadership and from your ranks with everything that you've gone through in the last uh, two to three months? Yes, yeah, so that's a great question. So here at our headquarters in Woodbury, you know, for the first time in 20 years, we actually went through a round of layoffs and we did ask our team to take some wage reductions as we are you know, navigating this crisis. And so those were very difficult decisions to make and uh, you know, probably my toughest day ever as a, as a business owner. That being said, I, I couldn't be any more proud of how the team has responded and rallied during this crisis on behalf of our network. And, you know, personally, we have... Uh, definitely accelerated and amplified all of our communication. We're, we're communicating far more frequently to all of our stakeholders. We're doing you know, weekly global calls. We're doing town hall meetings with our employees. We have our internal communication and our, and, our, and our dashboard has increased. And then you know we have prioritized, right? It's funny, you make a strategic plan for the year and then this happens and there are things you definitely do and then there are things you don't even worry about. So, so for us, it's been about communication. It's been getting aligned on the priorities and then having a great deal of trust. And you know, one of the things I, I think has been important for us is we've always hired for values, we've always hired for culture, and at a time like this, it matters the most because you are decentralizing control. You're asking people across the organization to make the best decision on behalf of the brand, and they're putting stakeholders before shareholders, and that's exactly the way it should be in franchising. So again, I'm so proud of how our team has responded during this crisis. Yeah, you mentioned the communication side of things. I was kind of curious if somebody's doing something really well in a different part of the world or in a different part of the yes. country, how do you make sure that gets communicated back to everybody else so that they can learn from it and, and uh, do even better as well? Good question. So, I mean, we are having those weekly calls where all of our international master franchisees are on the phone together and they're sharing best practices. And then we have people on the phone taking that and also cascading that out to the domestic side of the business and, and, and back and forth. And so we have uh, multi-purpose teams that represent studios and international and domestic and they're constantly talking and uh, we are making sure to share what's going on in the rest of the world so that uh, we, you know, we can have the agility to, to adapt quickly. So, and uh, again, we have broken down all silos. I mean, you, you know, again, we're working so closely. And so I wanna make sure we bottle this. So on the other side of COVID-19, we stay just as fast right just as nimble just as uh, collaborative as we are today so what other adjustments do you still have to make that you haven't made already 
Well, I, you know, I think we, the, the good news through this is we've worked on our digital muscle. So if you think about the studio brands, the bar method, Basecamp Fitness, and of course, Anytime Fitness, we're, we're still uh, supporting our communities. We're still providing our members with nutrition content and wellness content and, and workouts every day. And so on the other side of this, we want to make sure we are still doing that. We should be a bricks and mortar experience, but we should augment that, of course, with the digital experience. And it really should be, you know, the two should go hand in hand. So we want to make sure at a local level, we're providing as much support and engagement to our consumers as we can. Now, same thing for us and our franchise owners. You know, let's make sure we continue to communicate at a very high level, have a great deal of empathy, and make sure we're hand in hand with them as they're ramping the business back up. You know, it's one thing to have uh, your folks who are the franchisees in the Anytime Fitness studios. Uh, they're there, they help motivate, uh, the whole vibe helps motivate people when they're yes. there. How are you motivating people to use your online and, and your digital uh, services, uh, especially when some of them, like me, <laughs> am not used to going <laughs> online to be motivated to work out? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And first of all, you know, I'm an avid user of all of our brands. And uh, but I, I found that during shelter in place, you know, I have a nice home gym and I've been doing all the content that our brands provide. I still miss the environment of a studio. I still miss the environment of a club. It just is more motivating. And of course, you've got the friendly staff that's there to coach you and to, to kind of nudge you and push you along your way. But we still have, you know, incredible trainers, incredible content, and we're making it easy for our members right, to do workouts. We can hold them at different times of the day. We can make sure that it is body weight primarily, so you don't necessarily need the equipment in the club. And then for Anytime Fitness, right, providing coaching to meet them where they're at. I mean, we can you know, provide doses of information in the evening, in the morning. We can provide nutrition content. And you know, we try to understand what their lifestyle is. Do they have kids at home? And so we can customize some of the content to fit their lifestyle, to fit their routine. Um, you know, you can do a live class with Bar Method. You can also do something that's taped, so you can do it later. You know, we're providing 10-minute classes and 30-minute classes. So we're just providing a variety to meet our customers where they're at when they're ready to do it. Great. And then I wanted to ask you too, uh, any stumbles along the way in the last two and a half to three months? Anything that you, you, you and your team tried, you started out doing, and then you had to kind of redirect? Yeah, you know, I think there's, when you're working with franchisees, you know, you always want to listen. And now again, with you know a couple thousand different franchisee groups across the system, they all have a different point of view and what they want to do. And so, and, and state laws differ. So for instance, if a club, let's say does close, the physical space closes, they still have the ability to provide content and they can still build memberships for a period of time. And so we have to provide that flexibility on allowing clubs to bill or not bill. Um, we have to give them flexibility to keep open or not open. Like right now in Georgia, even though they can be open, some clubs are choosing not to be open. They want, we want to give them the flexibility to do what's best for their, uh, for their uh, communities. I guess at the end of the day, every now and then, I sometimes think we can make a quicker decision than we do. We sometimes you know, take so much feedback. We want to make sure we hear every franchisee. That sometimes I think the decision goes on a little bit too long. So if anything, maybe a bit more decisive. But at the end of the day, we make the right decision. I just think we should maybe do it a few days sooner. Sure. I think, I, I think we all think that way sometimes. Yeah. Um, Chuck, is there anything else that I should have asked you today that I didn't? Well, I, you know, I'm, look, none of us want to be here. But the fact that we are, it, it is our job as leaders to learn from it. How are we going to get better. This is an opportunity to invest in the business. Uh, you know, we see opportunities in market share. We see opportunities in real estate. There might be an opportunity, opportunity to acquire capabilities. And so, you know, I'm a hardwired optimist. Uh, if, uh, and as, as Minnesota people, you know, we are so used to like changing conditions, right? If you think about the weather is always changing here. And I don't know, I just, at the end of the day, we are going to be grittier. We're going to be more competitive. We're going to come out the other side of this faster than our competitors. And so despite not wanting to be here, the fact that we are, we're going to get better because of it. So we take that as a challenge and, um, you know, we can't do anything other than uh, control our own emotions and control our team. And I promise you, we're going to be better on the other side. Well, that sounds great. Uh, Chuck, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Dale. Appreciate it. And I want to thank our sponsor one more time, the Platinum Group, which for 40 years has helped companies during turbulent times. You can learn more about the Platinum Group at theplatinumgrp.com. And also, thank you to all of you for tuning in today. I hope to see you next time on One Take.